Pringle looking towards Agard. Ravel, ambitious, but brilliant! Hello and welcome to New York Talk. This is the Rotherham United podcast with a very special episode today. Um, we have club captain, uh, the Magic Man Richard Wood, joining us. Thank you for joining us today, Woody. No problem. Good afternoon. Uh, we have Mick and Danny with us as well, our guys. Hello. Hello. Um, and Ben is with us for all you Ben fans out there. Ben is with us, but he will be popping in and out because of certain things. Um, you may or may not hear from Ben going on, uh, later on. Um, so so go, you gonna say something, mate? No, 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 no. We just, we've got off to a professional start as always. Yeah, <laughs> we set we we set the bar where we want Pretty to set low. the bar. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, um, I haven't seen any of your podcasts yet. I don't mean to be rude with that, but I'm after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is about our level. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, let's start. Go back to the last start of the last season. Um, the well, strangest season in football history, not far off. Um, six months without a game, and then getting back into football with no fans in it. What was the preparation to last season? Again, must have been compared to all your previous years. Bizarre. Yeah, it was. It was. We were doing stuff like this, so we're on. We we're on Zoom uh, while we we're off. Uh, the fitness coach doing loads of fitness work with us. We had runs to do all the time. Um, we had fitness stuff in the garden to do. We had all sorts of stuff. And uh, it was strange because lockdown was strange for everybody. Um, mm. But I think it benefited me, gave me a bit of a rest uh, from football, but then got my fitness levels right up. And that then kick-started me going into that season really well for an old man. And uh, it definitely benefited me. And then going into the season, it was just a weird season, no fans. Um, all the games were like, I don't mean to sound rude with this, like reserve games. Mm. When there's no crowd there, you just walk out to warm up at the start of the game and there's just no there's no feeling, there's no atmosphere. So you're trying to go up for a big game and it's quite hard to do, especially for somebody like me that's played nearly 20 years in front of fans. And then to all of a sudden not do that is... Uh, Strange, very, very strange. Yeah, I'm going to ask about motivation for it because some people thrive on the crowd and everything. Like, some, I imagine some people can deal without it, but that must the motivation. You have to find a sort of a little bit of different way to motivate yourself for the game, or were you able to just tunnel it? Personally, yeah, I had to find a bit more. Um, I'm up for every game. I want to win whatever I do in training, anything. But just, I feel with fans, it gives you that. I don't know if it's subconsciously or what, but it definitely gives you. I don't know, a percent, a couple of percent more. Um, there's just that bit of more adrenaline going through you. And I don't know what it is. Everybody loves football and fans. It just Well, the last few weeks has been unbelievable with the games that we've had. And you see the contrast and how it is. Mm. It's just miles better for me. I love playing in front of fans. And I don't like reserve games. I don't like being in reserve games. <laughs> uh, and that's what it felt like. And so that's why it's just pleasing and that it's, it's unbelievable to have everybody back. Mm. Yeah. A topsy turvy season, some good wins, good good days. One of the turning points of the season where it thought like we were going to push on was the change in formation, which I didn't put in the running order, but I want to ask you about this. Changing to three at the back, it seemed to suit you down to the ground. It seemed to give, not a newly's life is the wrong phrase, but... It really seems to suit the way you play. It allows you a bit more freedom to push, come out of defence a little bit. Is that is that fair? Very fair. Um, <laughs> say, say my career. Yeah. <laughs> it's given me definitely a few more years on my career. Definitely. Uh, I need to just play with a manager that wants to play with three at back now, and I'll be middle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that either side at back three. I don't want to do that. But it definitely suits me. I can start. I can organise. I know I've got cover either side of me. Mm. So I can be quite aggressive on front foot and the lads either side of me, whoever's been playing, have been excellent as well. And it's definitely yeah. so with me personal. So I, if anybody asks me, I definitely will do it. And that's when you can play every week, so I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> there's, downsides, there's downsides to all formations, so mm. that we don't have out-and-out wingers at the moment. 
because we're playing three five two or depending how you look at it what, what you want to say five five four uh five four one or whatever um but for plus if you're asking me every day oh i just want to play so i'll say three back and put him in well, it gives you that opportunity to run in behind their defence as well, which we've found you doing a few times. I don't mind. I, well, I didn't, when, I win, when I had my younger years, uh, I'll always look a little maybe run. Just step yeah. in, step in front of somebody. And just, sometimes it just opens up and you just off mm. you go. And I think that's just depending how, I don't know, how confident you are. So over the last couple of years, I've just sort of grown into the role and everything that I'm doing now and really enjoying it. And I think that shows when I'm playing. Yeah, hmm. just just a little bit. And we've been saying for about four seasons now. This is Woody's last season. Now he's, he's done, and then he, then he turns up. You turn up next season better than you were the yeah. year yeah. before. Yeah. Well, when yeah. I first, when I first joined, I wouldn't have said. I'd have never said where I am now or what position, mm. my role, and everything. Um, I wouldn't say I was struggling, but you have little wobbles in your career. And the gaffer even says it to me now. Look at four or five years ago when he sort of took over. To how I'm playing now and what I'm doing, there's a massive difference, contrast, and I've just sort of grown into it. I'm enjoying every minute, and like a fine wine, same same to be <laughs> getting better. That's like what happens. Wine, Listen, indeed. it'll carry on as well. The older you get, the better you get. As as I'm proof, man, <laughs> aren't I? You're very good at upsetting Wednesday fans. <laughs> if that's anything. To well, do. you know. Listen, it's it's raised a bit of money in it, so it's got to be done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Um, the last season, last couple of months of the season, ended up being we talked about last season being the craziest season ever. That from what, March to May was just crazy. That that it, for a lot of seasons it was Saturday, Tuesday anyway, and then it was just Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. I had the Thursday game in there for laugh. Um, I, I assume that was just. I, I'm interested to know how, as a player, the setup was the days because. Saturday to Saturday, you get training days in between. Saturday to Tuesday, I know you get days off, less training days. How was that period as a player? Because there could have, can't have been much tr on pitch training time. No, there won't. Especially for me. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy. I really enjoyed it. I know it mm. won't be the results that we wanted, but a challenge. We all seen it as a challenge and something that don't come around. I don't think that will ever happen again. So I embrace it and enjoy enjoy the the challenge of it. And I thought we. We were unlucky. We, we can get everything we had, and obviously it just wasn't enough. And I just enjoyed the, the, that side of it. I love playing games. I haven't tried to go into games, not not bother training. Obviously, I, I do know when you work on training grounds, there's, there's, you've got to prepare right and do everything right. But I just love playing the games, one after another, one after another, and it was good. Just recovery times were difficult, and that showed. Um, I, I remember the Birmingham game, on the Sunday, they had a week, I think seven days to prepare for that game. Whereas if we played on the Thursday, I think, and then going into Sunday, and they scored within the last few minutes and there was nothing in the game. No. And I just think if we'd have been fresher going into it, it could have been a different result and we might have changed the whole complexion of the season. But it is what it is. And uh, I did enjoy it, but just obviously not the end result. Hmm. Uh, Mick, don't ask your referee question now. Well, I, 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 do, I do and I don't. I mean, I, I, let me let me qualify this by saying that I've never been a nasty, violent person in my life ever. Right? I, but the, my question's going to be: I take let me take you back to Oakwell. Oh. Two minutes into the game, and Gavin Ward does what he does. Yeah. Please, can you explain to the rest of us football fans how you didn't deck him? <laughs> because that has to be honestly. I, I mean, I mean that's that's obviously a bit of a tongue-in-cheek question, but yeah. in the, the the forty odd, nearly fifty years I've been watching football, I cannot remember, I cannot ever remember anything like that being allowed to 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 to, to happen. It was just the we, most remarkable thing I've ever seen. But what can we do? There was nothing that we could have done at that point, and you can't influence the referee. You can't get him to change man. Once he's made that decision, that's it. And in real time, obviously we all seen it and we thought it was a foul. And I was saying to the ref, if I did that, am I allowed to go up and do that to their keeper then? And I know what's going to happen if a foul against me straight away. Mm. Always, you see it every week. It's, it's madness. Yeah. 
obviously watching the game back after and seeing what happened, it's, I don't know what he's seen. I don't know what all he's missed, obviously. He's missed the, the thing is, he did the same at Preston. It was the same referee that did the, the and, and the same thing happened to Victor Johansson at Preston. Yeah. And, and and again, yeah, all right, um, Chad Evans got a yellow card. But then Chad Evans goes and scores a goal by fouling Victor again. And he doesn't give that either. And it's like, what? What is he watching? What game is this bloke watching? And it seems to be the same referees. You know, you get loads and loads of decent ones, and then there's a couple, Gavin Ward being one of them, that just. It's hard because everybody makes mistakes. And if they missed it or seen a different point of view or different angle to it, that's their decision. I make so many mistakes in a game. It's unbelievable. But <laughs> what, what yeah. If I slipped and fell and the club scored a goal, that's a massive mistake on my part. I didn't want to do it. I'm mm. sure the refs are the same. They all make mistakes. I know. I know they do, but there's mistakes and there's mistakes. <laughs> 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 when you do make when you make the same one three or four times. Well, I do sometimes, because <laughs> we, 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 we all do when it's just yeah. that is what it is now and that. We can't change it. I couldn't change it out on the pitch. Mm -hmm. what, what can you do? I try and stay on friendly side to referees, like all lads. They get to them, and I'll try and, as captain, be all right with him and, and talk through the game. That's what I try and do. We can talk properly and have conversations. I've got to accept his decision. So he'll tell me why he's done something, why why he's made that decision. And obviously, there's no point in arguing. It is what no. it is. That's it. As long as he's told me, that's what he thinks. What more can you do? So, what did he say then? <laughs> I can't do that, so I can't. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it's probably it's probably an unfair <laughs> question. He must have just said he got to the ball first, and he's, mm. he's won the ball without, and then made contact after. That's mm. the only. That's my only thing. He didn't look great, did Victor? Though, did he after the game? No. no. No, I know. I don't. I, mean, I don't know whether you're aware of this. John Brecking were on commentary, and and he refused to commentate from that point onwards. He he walked away. and He didn't commentate. I'm so I think he was just so back, yeah. so furious. Yeah, really. Big games. Big games. Yeah, yeah. It could have made a massive difference to what to was staying in championship. And yeah, yeah. And it, it was it, for me. It, it, it was it was those kind of things that that really sort of tipped the balance. I know, obviously, we, we, we missed loads and loads of chances and, and, and so on and so forth. So you can always throw that back at us that yeah. we went down because we didn't take our chances. But some of the some of the mistakes is, is, is the term that I'll use by, by some of the officials. They just sort of, they were there with the like final nails in the coffin, if you like. And for me, when Victor got carried off at Barnsley, for me, that was the end of our season. That, that kind of did it for me. Yeah. Uh, and it, yeah. No, I, I understand everybody's got like, your view of it and I understand everybody's views. Everybody's got different views on how football is. And I just see that over the course of the season, we yeah. just weren't good enough. We weren't, we didn't have enough. And if we'd have had enough, we'd have stayed up, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. We can look at different reasons and excuses, but... I'm, I'm not over it yet. We can see that and we're staying up all the way up to that point, we're staying up. And then a goal with two minutes to go, or whatever. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It came, uh, really, it came down to that last game. If we'd have just hold on to that that one goal lead, we'd have been fa obviously fine. So, mm. Mm. yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Mick, you know, I see a therapist about this because you do go to all the time. Seriously, I, I, get help. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't. I do need help, don't I? I do. Well, I'll get the chance this season to get promoted again. Three in a row. There you go. Yeah. You so that's, <laughs> yeah. Not, that's looking at different side to it now and we've mm. made a good start so everything's going well and that's what that's what you want now mm. yeah it's... do you, do you offer, offer th therapy sessions i mean I, i'll pay <laughs> it. <laughs> I don't know, my missus is a good one I, 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 i'm speaking to her about stuff so, uh, <laughs> we, I've tried that with mine, we, we all need it someone to speak to, yeah. to talk. <laughs> it is definitely <laughs> Um, going back to that Cardiff game, um, the, the, it's a one-off game. It's almost a playoff. Uh, I always thought, we talked about this in the podcast a lot, that if we can get down to the last game of the season and we're still in, in almost in control of our own destiny, yeah. I back us. I back Paul Warren. I back the players. I think, you know, and we were this close <laughs> to doing it. Is that, going into the game, was that? So I imagine that was the, there was a strong belief in the squad that we're all, almost, other than Derby winning, was in our hands. Yeah. 
Yeah, of course, we, we, we're always confident. We always believe we could do it. I really enjoyed the game again, even the preparation of it. The, mm. In the hotel, I was just excited about it. My kids did a video message to the players as well as we watch fan videos as well before the game. Mm. And that might make some people nervous, but it just it, it got me and I loved playing in that game. Just a shame. He miskicked it as well, the lad. Mm. I then, know. <laughs> he just went the opposite way and did us all. Uh, but you can talk, we can talk about it for hours, can't we? But it, yeah, you know, yeah. can't change it. And we have. Well, <laughs> oh god, aren't we? Yeah. The, the, thing, the thing is that I don't, I don't know if you were the same as a player, but because we would do this podcast after that game, we get asked so many times by so many different places, "Will you come and talk about this?" So we had to talk about this horrible moment, yeah. <laughs> loads and loads and loads. It were it were a bit, a bit of pain. Um, I had but... to talk about it on a on a live stream with a guy in America. He had he had everybody from the, uh, the from all the uh, the League One clubs in a live stream, and like everyone was talking about their own games. And I'm buzzing because we're one nil up and we're staying up as it stands. <laughs> and then whoever it was for Cardiff scored, and he says, "And we're going to go to Danny because it was because Cardiff have just scored." I'm just there, just like. No <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we're all devastated, won't we? And mm. it, it, it's hard. Defeat's hard, but that's football. There's always highs and lows, and there's, there's a lot of lows, especially in my career. But you always remember the good times. Oh, I certainly do. Anyway. Yeah. Hopefully, we yeah. all good memories this season. That's what. That's what we want. No, absolutely. Did it take long to get over? And the people are different, but that that seemed a bit of a crushing blow at the end of the season. So you have got a few months to, to sort of let go and forget about it. But did it take a little bit of time to get that out of your system, or are you are you able to kick it out straight away or sit no, shortly? A couple of weeks, probably a week or two. Mm. Uh, I got on all. I went on all the when did we go? End of May, start of June. Mm. So then a few weeks there, I were. I was in my garden, like my kids were at school, so I was just in my garden doing jobs, painting fences, mm. and trying to occupy myself. And <laughs> you do think about it then, it's hard. Mm. But I had my holiday then with my family, and you just come back and then you look forward to pre season. Well, you don't look forward to pre season, but you, <laughs> <laughs> you look forward yeah. to you start doing your running again, getting into it, and getting fit, ready for new season. And your, your focus go, goes straes to that. Why dwell mm. on the past and what's your disappointments? Just focus on this season, what's going to happen. And that's what that's what I did from probably me just before my holiday when I started running again. I had a couple of weeks where I didn't do much. Mm. And, then, and then started doing the fitness work, ready for the season. Cool. We're going to sprinkle some fan questions in. We asked people on Twitter and Facebook to get involved. Um, so let's start with Jake from Twitter. Uh, he'd like to know so far, who is the best player you've played with while at uh, while those? I've been asked this a few times. Um, when he was playing with us, I think that was all his streak, Danny Ward. Mm. And I got on really well with him, actually. We car school together and drove in. But probably that's probably why Warnock signed him at Cardiff, mm. because he did that well for us in that period. I know we went down, but he can do he can do anything. He hadn't really done it, obviously, at Cardiff, and then he's at Huddersfield now. Uh, but on his day and in training and stuff like that, he's he can jump, he can win headers. He can hold the ball up, he can he's quick, he can run around, he can finish. So it might not be necessarily every fan's choice, but he's definitely mine. And then I'd say I'd say not at the moment, but definitely will be Wilesy. Wilesy. We'll talk about Wilesy a lot. How how good don't have put pressure on his shoulders, but how good do you think he can be based on what you see? He can, he can do whatever he wants. He can go off and have a career that you dream of, really. Um and he's he's got his, his level headed level headed, and mm. uh, he'll be absolutely fine. He'll have a good career, and uh, he's going to be some player. Well, he is now. He's playing really well now. Yeah, he is, yeah. Only get, he's only going to get better as he gets older and more mature, and he's, he'll be he'll be very good. Mm. Fantastic. Oh, we do love Wiles, don't we? On the we do, yeah, 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 yeah. Big fans. Um, second Facebook fan question is a bit more of a difficult one, uh, but. It, Johnny Goddard says, "Do you think this club has got what, it's t- what it takes to establish itself in the championship without significant investment?" Now, this is a tough one for to ask you, but <laughs> if you have to ask it, it we we weren't far off staying up last season. For me, we weren't far off of a decent championship squad last season. Yeah. That, I assume that's why you see it. It's not. It's not all on. Oh, for me, it's not all on money, wages, 
Mm. Obviously, it's quality players in the, in the championship. But if you've got togetherness, good team spirit, you know, know how to play and how the manager wants you to play, and you do it well, there's mm. no reason why you can't establish yourself. So all you look at is Barnsley last season. Mm. How well they did. They, they got to playoffs and they were very good at what they did. But when we played them, I thought we more than matched them and played yeah, really I thought so. away as well. Um, so there were no... Yeah, I just I don't want to compare us to Barnsley. But, uh, <laughs> that sort of similar stature of a club. Why can't you establish yourself in champion? Mm. Luton do it. Luton have... Luton, yeah. Um, so there's no reason why you can't. It's not all... The wages do play a big part and finances. Mm. Uh, don't get me wrong, but there's certain teams that can definitely produce just by having a tight-knit squad togetherness and a, and a way of playing that's effective and works. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you look back at last season and we, we to be fair, we weren't beaten, and I mean properly beaten by anybody, you know. Mm. We, we we were a match for virtually, well, for every team that we played. Yeah. Um, our Achilles heel last season were pulling ball in back at net, which I guess, you know, is that's the difference in it, I suppose. But we've talked about it on the podcast a few times. When you're in that championship Take, you, know, you look at that championship table, the, the, the gap in quality between rock bottom and probably f- fourth or fifth is, is minuscule, it's tiny. Yeah. It's just that. It's just what we like I, 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 Is that what you pay for? The fine margins, the mm. person, that bit of magic or that bit of quality? Is that what the, the, where the money is and what? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Again, you could talk about it all day, but for me, you can. If you've got an effective way of playing and it works well, like nobody wanted to go and play Barnsley last year. No. Similar to West Brom now, the manager. He's mm. doing the same sort of, he's getting the same ethos and a way of playing, and nobody wants to do it. Same with us, really, this season. Nobody likes playing against us because of how energetic we are, high press, athletic. We go and, we go and lock on everywhere. and, and we don't give teams a minute, and mm. nobody wants to come in players. I don't think. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I tell you what, it's great to watch as well. Yeah. It really is great to watch because because it, it, the players the players are, are clearly giving everything they've got. And as a supporter, you know you don't want that player that's just wandering about, or half a dozen players just wandering about, you know, waiting for football to come to. Them. You want to see them putting that putting that graft in. And and, and one thing about one is teams you can never ever argue is that. <laughs> you're always going to get 100% plus from it's fantastic to watch as a supporter well I, I love I love watching the strikers close their centre halves down and mm-hmm. yeah nothing better for me than, than a striker running 30 40 yards and, and smashing and winning a winning a throw in or doing something where we win the ball back and we're going to play from them yeah I, I like that way of playing I might not fit that way of playing because I'm not that quick but I'm definitely, yeah, I'm definitely an advocate of how we how we do it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk about preseason. This season was it back to normal? This preseason, or as close to normal uh, as it can be? We we all COVID. We started preseason with some COVID restrictions. And now we're all left. Uh, how was preseason this year? Still tough, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, it was tough. It was more normal than it obviously last time, mm. uh, but it's been same intensity, same work that we've been doing, same running, same drills, which are horrible. Um, <laughs> I'm, used to it. I'm sort of used to it now. It's hard for the new lads to adjust mm. and get to grips with it all. Whereas the lads that have been here a few years, you know what's coming. It's still not nice, but I suppose your body's more, it adapts to it more and I'm used to it now. So my body, I just get through it. And that's probably why I'm still going because I just get through it. Um, uh, uh, on training methods in first obviously Lewis Wing last season came on last season he talked this season about there being a lot of running compared to what he's used to you've obviously played other several different clubs is non pre-season just normal training is there a significant more running than you've had in the past or is it just different things for different days Um, well it's changed over years I've um, I've played Mm. that I've had that (laughs) now it used to be no balls, no balls for right. three weeks, just run, run, uh, hill runs, outground reservoirs, stuff like that. Whereas now it's more science based and mm. it's more sprint, repeated sprints, um, not long distance stuff. 
and then there's a lot more ball work now um but we seem to do just that probably a bit more running than other teams <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, well, it's, 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 it's where we play and the gaffers mm. say a fitness coach was a fitness coach he loves that side of it he don't do he don't get involved in it he leaves that to fitness coach now ross um mm. but it's all stat based we've all got gps on everything's monitored you can't mm. hide and uh yeah you just got to give it your own and that's what you want to see gaffer wants to see people hurting because if you're hurting and you go through bar pain barrier you're more than willing to do that on pitch then and mm. and that's probably why i'm still playing doing so well I'm not, i don't know if i'm doing that well but um i can keep going through pain barrier i'm a decent player. i've been doing i've been good pre-season i'm not the quickest but i'll always give it me all when people are starting to work and tire that's when i come through then and mm. and do well um back to the fan questions we have andy hun from facebook um we've got to ask you about this question we've got you here um he wants to know about the goal at wembley um <laughs> we, just to go back to that briefly the we talked about this with arnie about being a boy a dream to win at wembley which he did i i imagine scoring at wembley winning at wembley and captaining your team up <laughs> them steps to lift the trophy there's not much more else you could have ticked off the list really for, for that day <laughs> no, unbelievable day um yeah, there's not much you can say, is there? What, what you <laughs> uh, Yeah, we just, we, 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 well, I couldn't have dreamed of it working out any better than it did. Obviously, I just wanted, all you think about before a game is winning. Mm. And that's it, we didn't need promotion. But for me to talk <laughs> wise, it's just stupid, really. And, uh, <laughs> me, the, the boys have just got home there. That's what I was looking around at. Yeah. <laughs> They absolutely love that day, and that's what I wanted. If mm. that's why I had my children quite well, I was quite young when I had, had children, when I had my two boys, they're quite old now, so they understand football, the massive football, and that's what I want them to see me play. And they got yeah. to play that day, and it's a day they'll never forget. So that's what that yeah. makes me. That's that's overriding even me doing it for me to do it in front of them. Mm. Uh, well, good and they just talk about it all the time my youngest he won't, when he's bored at home he'll watch it and put it on youtube and put it on <laughs> <laughs> it's really really all the time it's definitely not me doing it I, <laughs> <laughs> but you have a sneaky look though yeah of course yeah yeah i've got yeah. to <laughs> yeah i've got to uh it just put hairs on back of my neck when i watch it and just yeah. see my celebration my second one that uh i enjoy most my sprint back to halfwell never run yeah. that before. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was the most amazing day yeah. and, you know, and, and on behalf of all Rotherham United supporters thank you for that because it was just unbelievable yeah, yeah. it was unbelievable. it was strange for me I don't know if I, well, other people might know but I may as well say it on here uh, it was strange after the game I had a massive like come down mm. Mm. I don't know what I mean I didn't get to go around pitch so much with lads after the old fans it was more of on my own because I was doing interviews and then in dressing room after i got pulled again for some interviews so i didn't really celebrate in the dressing room mm. I came back after that my interviews and the dressing room were empty so I, I got a shower and got changed on my own so after being on cloud nine a second ago mm. to half an hour later i'm stood having a shower getting changed on my own it just yeah it was strange feeling yeah, I, got, I can imagine i got injured i broke my toe uh, I hyper extend my knee, so my knee was like a balloon. I was worried that I'd done damage bad, badly to it. And physios were quite worried about it as well. So I had that in the back of my head. And <laughs> I went and met my family, and my missus still says it now, I was awful. Like she was, I, would, I didn't want to speak to anybody. I just wanted to sit down, and I had a bag of ice on my knee, I had a beer. But I didn't, anybody, fans were coming up to me and stuff, and I wasn't being rude, but it was just strange. Mm strange couple of hours after that people probably don't know about and wouldn't imagine that happen after what happened in the game but then i came around don't worry i was all right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was just a massive it will have been that initial obviously i cuddled my kids and my missus when i seen them but then i just wanted to just to sit down and just i don't know it was just a weird mm. weird situation yeah 
Which, Imagine, yeah. It's, it's, you're in the battle for 120 minutes, you lose the trophy, and then. Oh, I'm, I'm, now I'm, I'm going to say something else. I'm, I'm I'm I were knackered as well. I were absolutely red. It was red hot, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah uh, no, wow. The adrenaline that must have been going through me just zapped me out, and that mm. was probably what it was. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I'm all the made up for me in a few weeks after that. So I'll be able to. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, stick with the fan questions, Liam Bates from Facebook. Um, do you fancy the Miller's job in a few years' time? Uh, we're still playing days, so I'm not playing too far ahead. But do, have you planned out your career after after you've stopped playing? Is it coaching outside yeah. football? Have you thought that far ahead? I won't say manager's job, but I definitely want to go into coaching. Uh, mm. It's something that I'm doing now, something that's growing on me, and I might be terrible at it yet. I don't know. But I help out, I help out me, me eldest son's team. I help with them. I'm going to start with the academy lads. I'll try and help out with them just to get some hours in. I'm doing my B license at the moment, the coaching badge. And, yeah, I want to definitely go into that. Uh, people keep asking me all the time about it, but I'm just not yet. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody says I'm old. Well, like you said, I'm getting too old now. Are you still playing? And I just want to keep being a player. I don't want yeah. that to disappear. Yeah, as soon as I say I'm doing coaching, mm. will that sort of push me to one side as a player? And I don't want that to happen. So, uh, as a player looking back on your career and, and the way that you're playing at the moment, the way that you're performing and the level that you're performing at, where does it rank in terms of um, you know? At, is it, are, you, are you at the sort of are you at your peak? Is my question, I guess. I know it's a stupid, it might sound a stupid question, but certainly from an outsider's point of view, from a fan's point of view, I don't think we've ever seen you play as well. Yeah, I'd, well, I'd say so. Yeah, it's strange saying that at 36, mm. but definitely, yeah. Uh, I had a, the only other time I can remember playing consistently well and doing really well and playing how I could do was when I worked Chef Wednesday when I was older, 19, 20, 21. And then I had a bad injury then and we were out for over a year and that sort of knocked me a bit. But then a few years before that, we were playing unbelievable then. Mm. And then since then, yeah, I've done all right, but then I look at myself now and that's definitely, yeah, I'm playing really well. It's, I, I just experience. Mm. I, know, I, know the game, I know the game and I know what to do and I can help other people and I'm trying to help as many people as I can in the squad. Mm. Um, fans back in this season, um, it's been amazing. Uh, that first game back at Plymouth, we, again, we've talked about this in the podcast, when the players came out, when you all came out for that first game against Plymouth, I don't mind saying them, I, got, I got emotional. It was a really special moment. The play, see, Seeing you guys back on the pitch, but seeing that 9,000 of the Rotherham fans and the Plymouth fans as well, to be fair, it was genuinely a special moment I will never forget. How was that first game back with almost a full house? It must have been amazing. Yeah, it was good. Just it sort of... Like we spoke about it earlier, back to normal. Hmm. I, that. I love the buzz of fans playing in front of them, a bit of banter with everybody, saying hello to everybody, putting smiles on people's faces. That's what everybody wants. That's why they come to football. And hmm. every, every, not, not even just Rotherham, the whole country is it's just it's lifting everybody again. And uh, it's, it's just nice for us to be on pitch and listen to you and hear you say that when we're performing or trying to perform for you and that's what we want to do and we want to put smiles on people's faces and there's nothing better is there than a Saturday afternoon at three o'clock and you do all your stuff before pretty much beer and meet mates in the pub and come on with us run around and run around like you did so not, um... <laughs> yeah like Evan went door shut <laughs> I don't know that saying either, Mick. No, um, no, I keep coming up with you, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, we sit five games in. Um, it's been a, a pretty solid start. Nine points in five games. A couple of games in that didn't go so well, but how would you rate the five games so far? Yeah, very good. I'm I'm really happy we are. We're playing. And it's a good base to start from. We, we can only get better. Um, it's always hard at the start of the season to gauge where you're going to be. Um, but the two losses that we've had, I thought were unfortunate. We played well in it, so there's no there's no need to panic about anything. We've had a, we've got points on board. We're, we're up there where we want to be. Could have been five or six wins, really. Uh, we could have had a draw, maybe the Wigan one. Um, 
but other than that, it's been it's been good. Uh, we look good against Plymouth. Got a good win up at Morecambe. It will be Wednesday last week. Um, so it shows it's a tough place to go. Um, and I thought we looked good against Doncaster up until we said we're sending off. Mm. So but yeah. knows, I, I'm quite happy and it can only get better. We've just signed Will Grigg, haven't we? So the squad's looking well. She'll be back soon, hopefully. So everything's going in the right direction. Everything's good. Mm. It's been positive, very positive. Uh, will you be playing? I don't know if you can tell us this. You, we will be playing a part in the checker trade, not what's it called? Pizza Trophy, okay. Papa John's. No, <laughs> no, no, idea. Play a part? no idea. We've just, we've just trained today and yesterday. Uh, we've got tomorrow off, and then we're in Sunday, Monday training, um, ready for Tuesday. So we'll prepare after his day off. We'll start preparing, ready for Doncaster on Tuesday, and we'll find our team then and find out what's on. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, is last that, couple of phase... is, that, is that a nice answer? Is that just a... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are getting too much away, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> um, a couple of face more Facebook questions. Mark Gambles has a couple. Uh, and this is my favourite question. Um, <laughs> really? Known as the magic man. Um, <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you know any magic tricks? I can't believe you're asking this. <laughs> I've got to. I do have one, actually. Do you? I do have one, yeah. But I, do you want me to do it or not? If you can, yeah. It, might take, well, it takes a couple of minutes. That's fine. We can wait. Yeah. No, let's go for it. We've been all day. We've been all day because they'll like this because I've got them. Great. Give me a pack of cards in there. I said you'd get a pack of cards before we came <laughs> on. I said that. <laughs> Great, they're asking if I can do any magic tricks. Said, yeah. I know you can do it. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it on the screen as well. I'll have to look away when I show you something. Just All right. You can do it to see it, won't I? <laughs> I don't know if I'll, it's a bit under pressure, this thing. Can you see yeah, it? Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> I, don't know if I have to pull back. I don't know if to do it. That's not going to go in. Right. Tell me when to stop. I don't know. I'm trying to get my camera there. Stop. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look away, sorry. Yeah, see so your card. I don't know if you can. Yeah, I yeah. got that. No. I gave him a good shuffle now. I do like cards, by the way. We play cards <laughs> in the farm of us. I've done this to lads as well a few times. I don't have to uh... Natasha. Oh, yeah, that's a question. I'm just going to, I've, I've shuffled and I'll split them again as well. I'll just turn some cards over, keep an eye out. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. Yeah. You won't be able to see your card. <laughs> oh. Sorry if you can't, if I'm going too fast. No, it's fine. Oh, there's jokers in it as well. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to see if you can see. God. It's going to come out soon. <laughs> I've hit it. Where is it? Right, see ya. Right. I'll bet you all a beer. In fact, I'll buy you all a couple of beers or a pack of beers. Next right. card to turn over is your card. I don't know what this one is. All right. That's the one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Normally, I bet. Normally, I bet everybody that everybody thinks I'm going to turn the card over that I've got in my hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I'll have it. There you go. There's your magic trick. Beautiful. Great. There you go, Mark. <laughs> Gotta be happy with that, mate. <laughs> you boys are laughing at me. Yeah. <laughs> this is the type of stuff we bring people. This is what they want. <laughs> Quality content. Yeah. Arnie didn't do us any magic tricks, did he? That's true. 
we do like magic in this house. It's good. We like magic. So. My, my lad's just the youngest. He's learning how to make a card disappear in his hand. He's holding that card and he makes it disappear. He's quite good. Actually. I'd get him on, but I don't know if I should. I don't want to come on. Board. <laughs> no, that's fantastic um the final question i have is again from mark gambles we can we give mark gambles two questions this one's a bit more sensible um if you could sign any player for this club who would it be i uh, speak you say messi or ronaldo and that's a bit of a yeah if it's anybody like that it'd be it'd be ronaldo um but i'm happy how we are at the minute so there's no mm. we don't need to sign anybody I'm sure all, everybody's screaming at the computer or desperate for fans, uh, a play, certain players to come in, but I'm happy with the squad and we just get on with whoever comes in and uh, we, we just go and enjoy his football, play football. Do you let it bother you? No know, transfer, transfer market, again, for fans, it's really exciting because we want to see new players come in. It's really exciting when strikers come in. Um, but I say, as a, as a player already at a club who's not going to move anyway, is it just strike? If anybody comes in, brilliant. If not, I'm not not really going to worry about that side of it. Yeah, we want we want the club to progress and do well, so we want good players through the door. So whatever players we do bring in, it's going to make us better, um, and it's healthy competition as well, which we need. Mm. So as long as it's not a centre half, I'm all right. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when they start saying that they want to strengthen in central central defence, then you know you're going to yeah, have then to, you start to worry a bit, don't you? Like, yeah, get on with them coaching badges. <laughs> oh, oh no, I don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you've missed the, You've missed a fan's question here, Matt. Unless I've been, unless I've fallen asleep, which I wouldn't be surprised. Danny Smith from Twitter, I put yourself seen. in Warney's shoes. If you were manager, who would you pick as captain? Oh, is that putting you on the spot too much? Probably putting on the spot too much. I'd say Icky. Yeah. Icky. Mm. He's, yeah. he's vice captain now. Any, anytime I'm not playing, he's always skipper. And he's, to be fair, he's grown in confidence over the last few years from his loan. Mm. Uh, he's probably most, other than me, most vocal in the team. And uh, everybody's got, everybody respects him massively and he's done really well. Yeah. Um, so it'd have to be him, definitely. Yeah. Mm. Easy choice, vice captain, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I suppose it is really. That's why he is. That's why I get for yeah. as well. As yeah. that, I don't play. Oh, when I'm not involved in school or anything. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. He's done really well since he's since he's been at Accrington. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a bit of a watershed for him, wasn't it? You know, he seemed to lack a little bit of confidence, and then he came back from there. It was like, we well, like we signed a different player completely. We, he just sort of, I don't know, his confidence had gone through the roof. Yeah, no, it, it did, and uh, that's. Beneficial loan system then, and Gaffer's done well, and he's done well, willing to go out on loan. So sort of, he signed for us, but willing to sacrifice that to go and get game time to then make a career here when he comes back, and it's worked out perfect. I mean. Yeah, and I suppose John Coleman obviously is a, is a pretty decent manager anyway, so he's obviously going to, you know, he's obviously going to benefit from from his experience as well, isn't he? So, but, uh, in Stanley, so well for all parties, I think. So, and that's that's what the loan system's all about. Yeah. And, uh, it normally it normally works with obviously the younger lads going out on loan to get an experience, but it also can work that way with Icky and it's just worked out good as decision it was to for him to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. Uh, Mick, Danny, any other questions you want to ask before we let Woody go? Um, I'm going to hit Woody with some top stats that I've uh, had a look at. Um, <laughs> so. As we all know, your first like your first club was Sheffield Wednesday, and uh, from what I've found, it was 189 appearances in all competitions with eight goals. You're only four appearances away from breaking that with Rotherham. Um, so, how does it feel being so close to finding a new top club, if you like? <laughs> <laughs> You see, Mick, I'm getting clipped for this one now. Aren't I was going to say, you're going to get clipped <laughs> with this one, aren't you? Now, yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm proud of playing for both teams, to be honest. Um, I grew up, I'm from like the Leeds area. So I went and watched Leeds when I was younger. But then as a player, then I've been watching Wednesday and love going to watch Wednesday. And then proud to captain and played so many games for them. 
But sometimes in your career, you've got to move on and you see it all the time, players move on. Mm. And obviously, I've, I went away, played for two other teams after that and then come full circle back into South Yorkshire again and ended up at Rotherham. And it didn't start off great. Mm. I'm not going to lie. I thought, what, what's going on here? I've made wrong decision. But looking now, it's a great decision. I've had it. This is my eighth season now. And I've, I've had loads of great memories here and I've loved my time and I wanted to carry on. Love to stay here for another few years yet and, and finish my career here if I can and then see what happens then in, in coaching. But um, yes, yeah, I love my time. I'm not really a massive, it's strange me saying this, I'm not really a massive football fan. So I've got no strong affection to one club. I think you sort of, your dad inflicts that on you when you're younger, doesn't he? And, you sort of grew up supporting teams like my two boys now. Obviously, they support Rotherham because I'm playing for them. They love Man City. One loves Man City, one loves Liverpool. And because I haven't put it on them to support a team, that's what happens. And so <laughs> I've got a strong connection with Wednesday. I do like look at Leeds score and I love playing at Leeds. I've scored at Ellen Road as well. So stuff like that I do like. And then I've, I've got a great connection now with fans, Rotherham fans. And the club, and uh, I'd like to think I'm well thought of at the club, and I, obviously I really enjoy playing for the club and want it to carry on. If that answers your question, <laughs> yeah, it does. But it's a good it proud moment anyway, and I, I want to get past that number of appearances anyway. I want to keep getting more appearances, yeah. getting more and I want to get up to six hundred uh, appearances if I can. I'm at five. I'm just past five fifty, I think. Somewhat, something like that. Don't yeah, fantastic. Um, and I'm going to add a cheeky one in here about when you first signed. It wasn't Steve Evans. Well, we've spoken to Ben Pringle, uh, Carrie Arneson, and Michael Connor about <laughs> the Steve Evans days. How was it? And I actually, it didn't start very well for you. He didn't sign you, but then get into the team. We ended on a little bit of a low point, I suppose. But how was that period under, for, under Steve Evans? Because we had some interesting times. Yeah, I, I, I didn't enjoy it at all. Um, I wasn't playing. I went out alone twice under him. So obviously he didn't he didn't fancy me. I, I got on all right with him. It's, it's, I say a lot to him when we play Billingham now, isn't it? Um, mm. play, come across him a couple of times now playing, but no, I didn't enjoy my time. And he won he won great. And since the gaffers come in and Warnock when Warnock came in, I got sort of a new release of life from it. And yeah. that's what happens in football is he you don't get on with every every person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. But yeah, I, I really enjoy it. But I want it when you when you sort of got your last leaf. Like this. I remember your red headband that you that you were broad to wear a headband. Both of us. Both both of us. <laughs> yeah, I remember wearing that way Wednesday when uh, Derby got that winner. Yeah. Um, or a good day. <laughs> yeah, well, it's my only way. You remember the good times, don't you? I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Very good. Uh, it was a good end to the season. Um, hmm. I can't remember how many games I'm being it was. Uh, it was good. I really enjoyed it under Neil Warner. Great guy. Hmm. Great guy, good manager. And you can see why he's done so well. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, so we'll end it there. So thank you all for watching. If you are watching YouTube, subscribe. If you're on iTunes, please subscribe. Um, Woody, thank you for doing this. We do really, really appreciate it. It's been yeah. a pleasure and honour to speak to you, mate. Thank you very much. No problem. Thanks for having me on. And Mick, Ben, Danny, Ben's in there. Mick and Ben, Danny, uh, thank you very much as well. Not done it, but yeah, no worries. Yeah, it's been great, this. <laughs> Pringle, looking towards Agar. Ravel, ambitious.